I am doing this pretty damn early in the morning, so if I sound like I just woke up, that is the case. And I have somebody else making the debut in this one, this flashback, Yunel Escobar, is pretty decent, man. I think he's like an 88 overall or something, maybe not even close to that, but I don't know. He's around an 88, I think. And he actually has some pretty decent hitting stats versus righties. Like, his contact versus righties is 97 or something. And his vision is high 90s as well. So another guy, I've been trying to stack up on the righties who can do good against the right. Look at fucking Grady Sizemore starting this game off with a dinger. That is no surprise. So the squad has taken an early lead in this one, Coors Field. That is, I made to start playing every single home game at Coors Field, even though I'm not home in this game. I find that so many people love to play at Coors Field. I never choose this stadium for my home uh, for my home games or anything. I may start to do so because every single time you play at Coors Field, it is just one home run away from starting a home run derby. So I may do that in the future. And I always seem to play good at Coors Field, too. That's just one of those stadiums, man. It, like Rogers Center and Coors Field. And, uh... I think that's it, to be honest. Yeah, Coors Field and Rogers Center are the only fucking stadiums I go and I just do very good at every single time, it seems. But yeah, Yunel Escobar making the debut in this game. I was hoping he could start uh, start off the tenure on the squad pretty decent. I mean, I have no idea how long I'm going to keep him. He actually has pretty decent fielding stats, too. I think I forgot to mention. I think his fielding is mid to high 80s and his arm strength is 70-something, but that's not too bad, I guess. I think it's high 70s, so it's not like he has terrible arm strength or something like uh, those Handy Ramirez cards or something like that. He has half-decent fielding, too. So it's not like he just has good hitting stats and mediocre fielding. I mean, his arm strength is, isn't that good, like I said, but still. Half-decent fielding for a shortstop can usually get the job done. And he, if he goes out there and starts shitting the bed, then I'm probably going to move somebody else in there. Like, I have no problem moving that A-Rod to shortstop, man. That fucking 2007 A-Rod, I'll move him over at short. And he's been doing good. He's been doing better at short than at third base. Like, he's made at least three or four errors over there at third base since he came in. But at shortstop, he's only played about two two or three games at short so far. But, damn, he hasn't made one single error over there yet. You know Escobar's first at-bat does not go as planned. That is just a weak chopper. But, yeah, able to get that out easily over at short. No problems over there at shortstop for it. You know Escobar. And I think I took someone else out of the lineup. I'm just trying to think who was in the lineup. Fuck, I forget. I forget who was in the lineup this game because I was playing a lot of games yesterday and I have a lot of videos uh, edited and stuff ready for commentary. Not really sure how many videos I'm going to have posted today, like today's fucking football dude. Like once once 2 o'clock rolls around and these first games start, there's probably no chance in hell I'm going to be... I'm even going to be leaving the chair, right? I'm going to be sitting on my ass all damn day watching these games and stuff, so I'm not really sure if I'm going to be able to get two videos posted today or not. But this one's going to be uploaded before the early games for sure. Look at look at Daniel Murphy, man. Underrated power. That is to straightaway center pretty much. Dude, the Moonshot squad might be back. They may be back, and not even all the power guys are in the lineup. They've been struggling. They have been struggling bad. The past couple games at least, man. They haven't been able to do jack shit. And Daniel Murphy is getting another home run on the board. So Grady Sizemore. And Alex Gord actually homered earlier in this game too. So three solo shots so far. Coors Field. It is just, it's gonna, it's always going to break out, man. It's always going to be a home run derby at Coors Field for both sides. I was just waiting for this guy to start a home run derby of his own. So I'm up 3-0 in this game. Nolan Ryan. He's been taking the mound a lot, it seems, lately. Or that, I may be thinking about the games I played yesterday, too. But Nolan Ryan has been pitching a lot for me lately. And I've been I've been looking for pitchers lately, too, man. Because, Jesus, I really want to get that Diamond Verlander. But I really don't want to spend that many stubs on him. I like it, when, I, when I rack up that many stubs, a pitcher is the last thing you'll want to buy, dude. Because, of course, you'll spend a shitload of stubs, like 40,000, 50,000 stubs on one of these pitchers. And you will never be, you'll never be able to take them out with them. So I have no idea what the hell I'm going to do. I've just been looking at gold pitchers every two seconds, man. Every time I check the market, I always start off with the starting pitchers because I'm looking for guys everywhere. And I have no idea who I should pick up because I have no idea who is underrated, who is good. Because I've tried a shitload of gold players or gold pitchers. I mean, I just picked up that flashback Jeff Samarja a couple weeks ago. And that, that was probably one of the best pickups I ever brought to the squad, dude. Like, I didn't spend that many stubs on him, and he's been going out there. 
and he's pretty much been the ace since he's made the debut. I've been trying to get Chris Sale to the mat more, like obviously, right? Like you finish, I finished the AL Central and stuff like that, get all these players, and Chris Sale has only pitched like twice since I did that, and that was at least two or three weeks ago. So of course, Chris Sale will probably never ever take the mound again. So Nolan Ryan, he's at, I have no idea how he's taking the mound so much, man. It was for, it was the longest time I was not even able to take the the mound with Nolan Ryan. And then just lately, he's been taking the mound every. That's that's what it seems like, man. You first pick up these guys and you're just begging, you're just begging to take them out with these guys, and then you finally come to grips with the fact that the game will never ever let you pitch with these motherfuckers. And then as soon as you just like accept the fact that you're never going to be able to take them out with these guys, they start taking them out. Every two seconds, it seems, and then he gets sick of them. That's what happens to me all the time, man. Every single time, I get sick of these guys because they come in, and then it just seems like left, right, and center, they're taking them out every two seconds. Grady Sizemore looking to go deep once again, man. You know I'm swinging for the fences with Grady Sizemore. No chance in hell I am. There's, there's, no, there's not even a possibility that I'm hitting the X button when Grady Sizemore's at the plate, man. Not even with two strikes. I am swinging for the fences. The guy is just on fire. Since he's made the de the debut, but that is just a weak ground ball to short. And this guy wasn't able to get much either up until this point. Anthony Rizzo leads off this inning. That was a hanger, man. That was the biggest mistake in location I'm o I've almost ever seen. That was a hanging curveball right down Broadway. And, of course, this guy hits one to the gap, so Rizzo is able to get the stand-up double, but he's not able to advance the runner on that weak chopper in front of home plate. So now Carlos Gonzalez is up. Another guy that everybody seems to have, man. This is Carlos Gonzalez is another guy I'm getting sick and tired of seeing. The gold cargo. I haven't seen like anybody with the flashback cargo. Maybe because everyone figures that the gold is just as good. But he's singling as well. But Rizzo is unable to score. So I'm able to get out of this inning without any damage being done. Thank God. I still got the 3-0 lead. Not that many hits in this game, but I got three solos on the board so far. Daniel Murphy looking to get another base hit. Look at that play over there. Andre Ethier, man. Do not sleep on this guy. I am telling you. Andre Ethier will dig in for the third time now. He struck out and bounced out in his first two trips. Now here's a ball hit in the air to straightaway right field. This ball's got plenty of carry to it, and it is out of here. Dude, that flashback Andre Ethier is juiced to the max. That card is so juiced, man, I don't even know what to say. Every single time this guy hits a home run, it is not even close to anything less than 450 feet. That was 480. Almost left the damn stadium. I don't even know what to say about this Ethier card anymore, man. I just may have to leave him in every single game because I have been sleeping on him. I have just been... I've just been complimenting Grady on everything he's done since he's made the debut. But every, ever since this flashback Ethier has came in, he's been doing uh, the same, if not better. I think I'm hitting around 350 with him so far. So I may just leave him in and see how many fucking moonshots he can hit. Because him and, him and Grady, they those guys do not hit anything close to wall scrapers. Look at Nolan Ryan, dude. This guy tried to make play of the year out there in right field. And I'm going for three. I am going for three with Nolan Ryan. I have I don't think I've ever hit a triple with a pitcher in any MLB game, so I was going for that man. Wanted to get a triple on the board with Nolan Ryan, but I'm getting thrown out. Getting embarrassed over there at third base. Nolan Ryan trying to leg that out for the triple. But of course I was not going to make that uh, I was obviously I wasn't gonna make that fucking triple, man. I don't even know what the hell I was saying right there. So this guy's trying to get something going in the late innings of this one. I was keeping Nolan Ryan in as long as possible since he was doing he was doing amazing to be honest luckily he's able to block that from going up the middle or that would have been a run on the board and a hit so i'm able to retain the goose egg on the board and ethier is back up looking to do some more damage at the plate i was waiting on something high in the strike zone dude i was waiting on something high in the strike zone but just late on that that was almost up on my fucking face too so that's why i didn't make contact with that but the next pitch i'm sending one to the gap and this guy took a fishy route to that one, man. I have no idea what this guy was saying, but that was a bad route to that ball. So that is a stand-up triple. Look at Ethier with the speed, too. So he's got the power and the speed. This guy is juiced to the max. I recommend picking up this flashback Ethier if you're looking for some more guys in the outfield, man. He's not going for that much, I don't think. And he just goes out there and gets it done. That's all you can say about him. He just goes out there and gets it done. So, of course, 
you would think, man, a guy struggling is trying to get something going, obviously, so he's laying down a bunt. I was talking about this guy trying to make play of the year in right field. Grady Sizemore may have, may have just made play of the year. Line toward the gap in left center, and he'll lay out to make a spectacular catch. Wow. What? What did I just see out there in center field, dude? Grady Sizemore may have just certified himself as the greatest card to ever step foot in an MLB game. This guy is going out there making play of the year in center field. And he's also going out there and hitting two home runs a game pretty much. So I don't even know what to say about Sizemore anymore, man. He is the GOAT easily. So the ninth inning rolls around and of course... I'm leaving Nolan Ryan in the game. Why the hell not? And of course, this guy is going to make it interesting. Getting a lead-off single. So, yeah, nobody was covering the bags because I had a five-run lead in the ninth inning. So, obviously, nobody was going to be covering the bases. So, Chipper Jones is up trying to squeak a fastball in. This guy says, no mas. That is long gone to right field. And cue the comeback question mark. You'd think this guy was going to... Uh, at least make it interesting. Of course, he gets a run on the board. But after that, that is game, set, and match. And guys, I think you might agree. There's little doubt that the star of this afternoon's contest was this man, Andre Ethier. Don't put that card in your bicycle spokes. He's our top player of the game. Yeah, he came through with a couple of hits. But more importantly, that big home run, which really led his guys to this victory.